everyone. Um, as I was introduced, my name is Stefana. I am a machine learning engineer at EMAG. We are the largest e-commerce ecosystem in Central and Eastern Europe, based in Romania, Hungary, and Bulgaria. This will be relevant during the talk, since the languages that we operate in are one of the less covered languages in LLM. Um, so this presentation will cover our journey of exploration of how we're building our relevance model for the learning to rank models. This has been my focus for the past couple of years. And yeah, here is our relevance model that we want our learning to rank models to learn. Sometimes it is also referred to as pertinence or aboutness. And it's central to the information retrieval area. But one issue that I've discovered with this is that it's very hard to define what exactly is the relevance. As a very diligent machine learning engineer, when first tasked with building this relevance, I went on archive.com. And all the articles regarding building your relevance model can be clustered without any overlap into three categories. The first one, make no mention of crafting relevance. And unfortunately, there's not much inspiration to gather from them. It makes sense that people are not very open with how they're building their relevance models. Then there are those that recommend using traffic logs as data source for your relevance models. Some quotes regarding this are leveraging user user clickstreams data as product relevance or order items by their likelihood of sale. The third very distinct category is the one that uses manual annotations to label their term, product, or uh, document pairs. Uh, the most known one is the search queries data set, which is a large-scale manual annotated data set of difficult queries. So it seems like we cannot really agree on one definition of relevance. But can we, def can we define a relevance? <laughs> if we are to follow the first usable definition of relevance, then that's very easy. The users do most of the work. They search terms on our website, they interact with products, and might even buy a subset of the products that they interact with. Then our only job is to aggregate these interactions at a certain level, most commonly the term or the search session level, and assign some scores. At this score assignment stage, there might be some heuristics involved, but they usually reflect the particular list of the data that you have. And while we might do some data cleaning in this step, this type of relevance is very much the will of the people. In contrast with this, if you want to gather manual labels, then you have to put a bit more thought into this. First, you need to gather your annotators. You need to sample term and product pairs, since a small team of annotators cannot cover the same area that millions of users do in everyday searches. You need to provide some definition of relevance, usually three examples, to really constrain how people will label your term and product pairs. And then you wait for your annotators to generate the labels. But this image is a bit outdated as of 2023. And right now, you don't really need annotators in the sense of human annotators. You can replace them with some LLM. And this has leveled the playing field quite a bit meaning that even for less discovered languages or for people that do not easily have access to human annotators, you can get relevance labels from a large language model. The rest of the process is very similar. Um, so we have the two approaches. How do they, they differ in the way we construct them? How do they differ as the end result? First of all, since traffic logs are based on users, which are, act like market analysts in a sense, they are price, trend, and availability sensitive. 
And on the other side, LLMs usually lack context and cannot, as of now, take into consideration variable factors, for example, price. They are only able to give a relevance label for the term and product pair at one singular point. Moreover, traffic logs are highly correlated to business metrics since they are constructed on the same data. So it makes, at least in theory, more sense to use them to construct your relevance label, your target for your learning to rank model, if your goal is to improve some basic met metrics. On the flip side, users tend to have a very fuzzy definition of relevance. They browse products. They don't always have the intent of buying the product that they're searching for. And also, they might misclick the products. Uh, while we're not able to fully define the relevance for the LLM, given that we can give examples, it provides a lot of standardization between labels for, uh, that we get from the LLM. Moreover, users are impacted by trends, meaning that large chunks of the product catalog can be un simply uninteresting to them, and we might not get any information regarding them. And through just some sampling or trying to cover a, a bigger diversity of terms, LLM can, LLMs can cover some of those terms that are less discovered by user. And lastly, one big problem, to which there are a few solutions in training procedures, is that users are highly affected by display and position bias, and they also tend to interact with a small number of the products that are displayed. On the other side, LLMs do not have this problem. They are able to label relevant product after relevant product, no matter how many other relevant products have been shown to them prior. And a few months ago, when we kind of looked at this comparison between the two, we thought, how can we mitigate some of the issues that we have with the traffic logs relevance, mainly uh, users interacting with irrelevant products, and also the fact that users do not interact with enough relevant products from the ones that are displayed to them. Can we use some of the labels from the LLM to improve our traffic logs-based relevance? And that's what we did. Uh, Right now, the process to build our traffic logs relevance is very easy. The user searches, and it then showed a list of products. The scores for the product at the term plus user pair level are either, either unknown for the products that are not displayed, zero for the irrelevant products, and then the relevant products take integer values in a very small range. This is due to how we uh, train our learning to rank model in the end to keep the NDCG in a normal range. Um, since we cannot cover the entire term product pairs, to the LLM we only uh, send a sample of term and product. We choose some of the terms, stratified sampling from the entire data set, and some of the products shown to the user, but we also choose some other products that might be highly relevant which have never been displayed before to the user. These are sent to the relevance prompt at the LLM, and we get irrelevant and relevant labels. This is a conscious choice of change, like change from the numeric labels to the relevant, irrelevant labels from the LLM. How do we combine now the two? It's, the process is very easy. If from the uh, traffic side we are, have an unknown label, and the LLM is confident that this is irrelevant, then we put the score zero. If the LLM tells us that the product is irrelevant, we give it the lowest relevance score, in this case one, but this is not done for all the potential relevant products, just for a subsample of them to maintain thing, to not skew too much the data. The same thing we do for the zero relevance from the traffic side, but things get interesting when we get to the relevant products from the traffic side. This is where we set a threshold, separating products from highly relevant, for example, products that have been purchased, and re may be relevant. Under this threshold, if the traffic and LLM side disagree, we trust the LLM side, marking the product as irrelevant, in order to mitigate this misclicks or just browsing. And obviously, if they do agree, we keep the original traffic side relevance score. 
But if the traffic site score is above this predefined threshold, then we just trust the traffic site. We think that if users speak with their pockets, for example, then we should trust them, in, trust them after that. So overall, um, while the impact in the data set has been very small, we've only been able to gather labels from uh, less than 10% of the terms, uh, the number of sessions that have some change in their relevance has been a bit bigger since we do stratify sampling of terms and some of them are highly popular. And between these sessions, we do have the unified relevance, which has 70% of the sessions unchanged, and 30% of sessions show an increase in the number of relevant products. And this data set is then sent to the learning to rank model to be learned as a target. And if you maybe do not trust it completely, it's very easy to just weigh differently the sessions that have been changed in the, data, in the training procedure. OK, up until now, I've kind of ignored what does LLM mean and not been very, um, I don't know, uh, direct of what we've been using. This is because it's a very big trade-off in what you can do to gather labels. You either can be fast, cheap, or accurate, usually two of them. And our experience until now has been like this. Closed source models are fast, and reasonably fast, and very accurate, but they're not cheap. This is, again, true right now. It might change in the future, and it has been changing. Open, closed source models have been moving towards the cheaper side. Open source models are obviously cheap and very fast with very little modifications, but especially in less discovered languages, they are not as accurate. But where do we see the future of this is using, especially for less discovered languages, is using custom models, um, for example, cross encoders that are able to not necessarily provide relevant, irrelevant labels, but provide a sc potential sc relevance score that can be then maybe better combi com combined with the traffic side relevance. But again, this is true just <laughs> today. Maybe tomorrow OpenAI will release a new model that is just infinitely cheaper than the current ones, and we move towards open source, closed source will be just better. Or maybe open source models just become infinitely better for less discovered languages, and that will be the golden standard of, use it, of gathering relevance labels. And yeah, this is the story of how we've built our current relevance model that it's right now used for training our le uh, learning to rank models. Thank you. Do we have any questions for the speaker? Oh, there's a question there. Hi. Thanks for the great talk. Um, I have a question regarding, um, so you mentioned that, let's say, the logs you see from your users are kind of biased towards some trends, isn't yes. it, whatever. And LLMs are not. However, at least in my experience, I can't really agree with that because LLMs mostly, at least now, carry, um, let's say, high traffic sites or represent high traffic sites. So how would you see, um, yeah, we, do we need to have a balance between them, or um, do, do you still think it's unbiased? Uh, I do not think that LLMs are truly unbiased when it comes to what knowledge they have in regards to trends. Where I do think they are useful in this context is in the fact that users for some periods of time, might not search specific terms. For example, in, this is the context of e-commerce. They will search spring dec decor or Easter decor in April, and they, they will search Christmas-related things in December. That means that your retraining of model, if you don't have a large enough window, will contain biased data towards that cur current trends. But if you are, you're, you can send 
to the LLM, any type of term you want. You can ask it to label Easter decor in December, and you'll have just a bit more data that covers some undiscovered parts of the, your product catalog at the point. But yes, you're right. Like it's, they are LLMs are biased towards trends, are biased towards what already people are doing, but they just since they give you the flexibility of getting labels on demand, you mitigate some of the day-to-day -day bias of users. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for a great talk. Um, maybe a bit related to previous question. Uh, I was wondering how much um, domain specificity can be uh, reflected by LLMs, or is this something so you spoke about custom models because of language reasons. Is this something that you can also encode into your, your custom models? I don't know how, how vertical your, your e-commerce domain is, but uh, I would assume a specific vocabulary, a specific user interest for, for that domain that might not be covered by a more general model. Um, I'm, I hope I understood your question okay. correctly. But... Uh, Right now, we've tried, so the area in which we operate is very diverse. The products that we sell are cover anything you can imagine, mostly. So there's not a lot of very specific domain knowledge that the LLM needs to have. We have seen issues with particular, especially with particular brand names. This is, again, an issue with Romanian. There might be... Uh, nouns, just common nouns that are brand names in which the LLM just doesn't understand that this is a thing and users know. This is why we're trying to do this where, okay, there's a point in which we really do trust users. And this can also be aggregated at, at a greater level. You might also look like, okay, all these users are searching this term. The LLM is very confident that all these products are irrelevant, but users are still buying them. Maybe there's an issue there, and you can kind of flag the terms, maybe gather a pool of terms that are not as well understood by the LLM. But in general, we don't have a lot of very domain-specific knowledge that needs to be known prior. Okay. Yeah, and I guess the, the combination of the two, like the, your long yeah. information, this yeah, yeah, we, we, yeah. yeah that, that's, I think, where the strength comes from, in the combination of the two. Um, thanks for presenting uh, how to configure the, config, uh, the relevant score using LLM. And I'm very interested to know how you validate the scores. So when LLM gets you a really large um, relevancy score, how do you validate? That actually makes sense. Um, so right now, these relevancy scores are used to train the learning to rank model. We are very fast in getting to production, these models, not truly in production, but into live testing. So besides some visual signals, besides looking at how many sessions are impacted, how many contradictions we have between the two sides, and also after training the learning to rank model on this modified data set, we have tested it on a different data set that just compares term relevance, not term plus user relevance. It performed better than the previous model, and then we sent it to an A-B test live, and that's how we validate the results. We're, everything that we're doing has to go through the A-B testing, so we don't dwell a lot on other metrics. We just say, okay, this, we are highly confident in this, we can, let's try and test it. And so, yeah, the performance in the A-B test, which has been positive, is how we validated it. Hi, I'm wondering uh, what's your approach to prompting your LLM? Um, I saw that you were maybe focusing on using custom models, as do we. I work in a Norwegian insurance company, and uh, we have some models that are limited because they are, although they are instruction tuned, they are not like very well fit for instruction. So 
some tricks that we would do would maybe be like imitating an email exchange uh, to closely represent okay. the data of the foundation models. And I'm wondering, like, are there any tricks you do to make this relevancy uh, prediction better? So. Um there are two parts of our relevant I, that I think that are important in our relevance prompt. Has on one side has been like what's I think called priming the model, just explaining very well the context. That one for us, we've tried both English and Romanian prompts. It's really interesting. It seems like the English prompt works better. That doesn't make a lot of sense since after after that uh, you prime the model, then you give it examples, and since you want your examples to reflect the data for which you want labels, the examples are then in Romanian, like search term in Romanian and uh, product names or whatever we're giving to the model in Romanian as well. We've just iterated on this. We've also tried having a conversation with the LLM, but that gets expensive pretty quickly. So right now, that's not really feasible. But that if you don't need a very large data set, or um, you are OK with a higher budget to get your labels, then I do think trying to have a conversation, so uh, prompting the LLM to explain its reasoning, that might help. Or just asking the question again and gathering from that. But yeah, I, I just would say if you are working in a less discovered language, then Trying not to speak only in that less discovered, less work with language might help in general. Thank you very much. Thank you.